God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Be blessed as you listen. And what I want to talk about is that name, that name. That's what I want to talk about today. Starting in this series of conversation, as we started this month, the Holy Spirit laid strongly in my heart that there is a change of name, a change of name. Not so much in the physical, not so much your natural name, but in the spiritual that God is changing destinies. God is rewriting stories and histories. God is doing something mighty in the lives of somebody. But it's worth it that we begin our conversation from this passage of scripture, Philippians chapter 3, chapter 2, sorry, it's Philippians chapter 2. And when you talk about a name, a name is a unique identity. It's an identifier, it's something that is bestowed on somebody, glory to God. When God created Adam and Eve in chapter 5 from verse 1 and 2 of Genesis, it said the Lord blessed them and he called their name Adam, hallelujah, which means the father of all creation. And so God himself bestowed a name upon Adam that fit the position. And the description of Adam. He became the beginning of mankind. Hallelujah to God. And so in the process of time, you see God himself bestowing names upon people. Abraham was born and God called him. Abraham became the beginning of the chosen nation. And Abraham was Abram when he was called, and his wife Sarah was Sarah when she was called with Abraham. And when time came, the Bible changed the name of Abram to Abraham and Sarah to Sarah. And the purpose of that was to rewrite their destiny and to bestow upon them a name that fit who they were. And so Abraham became the beginning of a chosen nation. Praise the Lord. And then as the process of time continued, came Jacob. Jacob, God chose him by himself. And on that day when Jacob was running away from Esau, and he laid down his head upon the stone as a pillow, and then heaven opened, the angel of God came, and there was a struggle between him and the angel of God. And as the day was about to break, the angel of God said, let go. I need to go because day is coming. And the man of God said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And the angel of God said, what is thy name? And he said, my name is Jacob. And the Lord said, from that day, your name shall no longer be Jacob. Your name shall be called what? Israel. Because you have one battle with God. And that was the beginning of a covenant nation. So Israel was born by God himself. The name was bought out of heaven, given to him by God himself. So as you move on in the history of mankind, you see God intervening by changing and transforming people starting with their names and so jesus was born the beginning of the christian race and so jesus when he was born the angel of god appeared to marry the mother of jesus and he said his name shall be called jesus for he shall what save his people from their sin his name jesus became the description of his assignment and as the Bible went forward, it said his name again shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Because he became the embodiment of the divine God living among men. And so it was a description of who he was. And then there came Paul. Saul so was he before he met God on the way to Damascus. And God gave him a transformation. And from that day, his name was changed from Saul to Paul. Hallelujah. And by the Holy Spirit that dwelled upon this man, and by the inspiration of God, he wrote 
half the books of the New Testament. And it shows that in all generations, God has been in the business of transforming lives and transforming people by their names. Glory to God. And it does not matter how you were born, where you were born, where you came out of. But the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When you are born into a natural family, what happens? On the eighth day, everyone gather together to celebrate the birth of the new baby. And they bestow upon that baby a name. A name for which you'll be identified with throughout life. Hallelujah. And if that happens in the physical, the same might be happening in the spirit. That when you are born again, there is joy in heaven for the Bible says, There is joy in heaven for every sinner that repents. So the moment there is repentance on the earth, there is high celebration in heaven. And God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the angels of God, the elders in heaven, gather together and say, what shall we call this new son that has been born? Hallelujah. And God himself said, as we read in Isaiah chapter 62, that I will give you a new name. And I will make you to wear the crown of glory. And I will make you to be clothed with royal diadem. Hallelujah. And I believe in my heart that this is what God has set out to do in this season. That's what he has set out to do for you and for me. And I know whatever God has done or whatever God will do will be permanent in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus, or oh, Jesus himself, became a representative of names, name written in the Bible, name spoken into the spiritual, that no devil, no power can withstand. And that brings us to the chapter that I just announced, Philippians chapter 2, and we are going to read verse 9 and following before we go home this morning. Hallelujah. God is good. And now look at what Bible says. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. Wherefore, wherefore, God had highly exalted him. Wherefore, God has what? Highly exalted him. Who are we talking about here? We're talking about the Son of God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was manifested to be the Son of God by signs and wonders. Hallelujah. And so Jesus, the Bible says that wherefore God also had highly exalted him. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him. I believe that God also will highly exalt somebody here today. If you are that person, give God praise. Hallelujah. It says, wherefore, God also had highly exalted him. The leading up to this verse is all that Jesus Christ had done. Whereby he lived among men. Whereby he did not compromise who he was. He did not give himself to men because he knew all men. John chapter 2 verse 24. And so Jesus lived a life that nobody could find anything against him other than he served his God. And so as he lived through uh, the time that he was here, ministered to the sick, lay hand on those who needed help and God ministering through him with power and he, he fed the 5,000, fed 4,000 over again, did all manner of miracle, raised the dead up, hallelujah. And it came a time that Jesus Christ was delivered by his own people to foreigners and strangers, the Roman people. And Jesus was tried under a mock trial environment. And Jesus was condemned to death because his people said, Give us Barnabas and away with this man. Let his blood be upon us. Let his blood be upon our children and our children's children. And so Jesus Christ in that day was condemned and Jesus was crucified on the cross. But he was buried on the third day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He rose again from the dead gloriously. Death could not hold him captive. The devil could not hold him down. The grave could not lock him out. But he came out gloriously. Hallelujah. And he ascended into heaven. And the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of majesty. Far above principalities 
and powers. He became the dominion over everything. For the Bible says, for nothing was created without him that was made. Whether they be visible or invisible. Whether they be dominion or throne. For all things were made by him and for him hallelujah to god he's the only potentate he's the creator of everything he's the word of god and when god said let there be there was hallelujah and that word is our life forevermore glory to god come on somebody give him praise hallelujah to god hallelujah to god and so having done all of these things and shed his blood so that your blood can no longer be shed hallelujah after he has done all of these things who for your sake became poor so that through his poverty you can be rich hallelujah after he has done all of these things that he bore your sins and your sorrows and the chastisement of your peace was upon him and by his stripes you will heal after he has done all of these things that he went so that you will no longer go hallelujah that he was condemned so that you can be justified hallelujah after he has done all of these things the bible says wherefore god had highly exalted him and how did god exalt this jesus he gave him a name that is above all name and the question is this it was god who gave him the name jesus uh, when he was born and after he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven what was this that the lord said wherefore thereafter god highly exalted him and given him a name that's above all name i'm not here today to tell you the exact name that was encoded into that name j-e-s-u-s when we get to heaven we can find out from the father that what was it you were talking about through the apostle paul that wherefore god has highly exalted him and have given him a name that's above all name. Now, what I'm trying to say to you here today, that it doesn't matter whether you are Christopher. It doesn't matter whether you're Joseph. It doesn't matter whether your name was Andrew. It doesn't matter whether your name was Peter. It doesn't matter how you were born. But the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes this world hallelujah when you're born of god your name is born of god hallelujah glory to god i may not understand what name god calls you by you may have a pet name with god i may not know it but each time god identifies you he calls you by that name and the devils may not know that name only god may know maybe the angels of god do have a, a clue who god is referring to but the bible tells me here that wherefore god has highly exalted him he gave him a name that's above every name and look at what the bible said in verse 9 for at the name of jesus glory to god wherefore he highly exalted him and has given him a name that's above all name uh, and then he goes on and said wherefore god has highly exalted him and has given i cannot get out from this scripture and has given him a name that's above every name uh, and then he says that at the name of jesus that was the name that he was given the day he was born uh, but there was something else about that name there was something else that happened after god the father and the holy spirit got together and said he has satisfied the just the man of an holy god what are we going to do to this son of god who's done all the things that will require him to do and is on his way to heaven what is he that we will do for him he does not need money because he created money hallelujah he does not need wealth because he created wealth he's the embodiment of wealth he does not need glory because glory himself is personalized in him hallelujah to god but they said we know something that will be done to this name glory to god because he said before today in the book of luke uh, that in my name ye shall do what cast out devils uh, in my name you will do what heal the sick in my name you will raise the dead uh, we need to do something about this name that they all know 
Whatever God did, he did it because of you and because of me. Because somehow we could not go into the spirit to decode all that God wanted to do. And there's something that we knew and it's the name of Jesus Christ. There was one name that the disciples knew was the name of Jesus Christ. They didn't know anything else but that name. And God said, we're going to have a transformation of this name. You didn't need to change J-E-S-U-S, but we're going to change it in the name of Jesus. And after that moment, it became a name that's above every other name that are the mention of the name Jesus. Every nail should bow and every mouth should confess to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. If there's nothing else that God has given to you that Jesus gave to you is his name. Hallelujah. That you can walk into the pits of hell and come with the name of Jesus. As long as you carry with you the name of Jesus, all nails are going to bow in Jesus' mighty name. And glory to God. As long as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death in the name of Jesus, all nails are going to bow. But I've got news for you that his shadow is close by. Glory to God. He's with you wherever you go. He's with you when you come out. He's with you when you go in. He's with you when you are praised. He's with you in the down city. That's who he is. Somebody help me praise him. Somebody help me give him glory. And Bible say of things in heaven, doesn't matter where they are, in the heavens of heaven, he said they will bow to that name. He said of things on the earth, whether they are happy things on this earth, whether they are moving things on this earth, whatever they are, whoever they are, they be humans or spiritual. Bible say that they will bow at the name of Jesus. He said, whether they be under the earth, whether you couldn't see them, but God sees them. But when you mention the name of Jesus, it said they will bow. Glory to God. So it doesn't matter what you're up against. They may be physical. They may be spiritual. But here the Bible is telling us the things that are seen and the things that are not seen, they all bow at the name of Jesus Christ. Because that name was transformed for your sake by the power of God. That name by himself was born by God. And Jesus Christ, that's what he gave to his disciples. He said to them, go in my name. Wherever you go in my name, if, if anybody will give you a glass of water in my name, that person will be blessed. He said, whatever you do in my name shall receive God's approval. And God said, ask anything in my name, it shall be given to you. If there's anything that you must know, if there's anything that you must have in this life, it's the name of Jesus. That's why somebody who for some reason found himself in a nightmare being pressed down by spiritual forces, if he can just holler the name of Jesus, uh, he received deliverance. That's how powerful that name is. Somebody who's about getting in an accident and can call the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit takes over the vehicle and maneuvers the vehicle out of arms way. That's the power in that name. Somebody who's got nothing but he's got the name of Jesus. And I like this. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. If that's all you got, you got it all together. My God, does somebody love God in this place? Help me give him glory right now. Come on, give him praise this morning. I feel him here. I feel God here. Glory to God. And what I'm saying with this scripture, brothers and sisters, what, I, what I'm going with this is that when God decides to intervene in your life in the area of who you are and what you've been called by for so long, when we read that scripture, it said you will never no longer be called desolate. You will no longer be what? Called desolate. You will no longer be called forsaken. And these are identifiers. These are names that are identified with folks. And sometimes it becomes the trademarks of individuals. And when folks talk about you, they can differentiate you from others by those type of names. They say, you know what I'm talking about that crest. I said, no, not that one. What are they talking about? Not that one. 
but the one whose life is so miserable. You know who I'm talking about. I so, say, yeah, we know him because we, we know that that's who he is. And so that name becomes your second name. And so folk identifies you with that. And as they call you that, the manifestation of it begins to show up. Say something, brothers and sisters, about name. Whatever name you're called by physically identifies you with certain occasions in your parents' life and sometime in your life. And so when you're called by that name, they're calling you Lazarus, come forth. They're speaking those things into your life. There's power. There's power in the words that comes out of people's mouth. If you're called blessed of the Lord, hallelujah. And that's what the Bible says. Say, so you shall be called blessed of the Lord. And so if, if that's who you're called blessed of the Lord, you know what happens? As they invoke that name on you by calling you every time they do, they're calling forth a blessing. And you find yourself being blessed. That's why parents, they go through lengths to prayerfully determine what name they call their children by. Because it's important. The whole world is going to pronounce that name. You're going to keep saying it and you're going to keep answering to it. And so when blessing is called, you say, yes, sir, I'm here. So what you're saying is that you are in agreement with what you're being called by. And so the name of Jesus, every kneel should bow. So when you call the name of Jesus, because the Bible say at that name, every kneel should bow. The moment you call it, you are reaffirming what is in that name. And because God has authorized that name to do these things, those things must bow. So you're invoking the power in that name. So every one of us here seated, there is a level of power that accompanies your name. And so when folk call you by it, they're invoking that power, whether good or bad. When Jabez was called sorrow all his life, it followed him through life. We just talk about Jacob. When Jacob was called supplanter, each time that father called him, is calling forth that supplanting nature. His mother called him Jacob. He's calling out that supplanting nature. And he acted it out. But if you go back, look at his life thereafter, after the change of name to Israel, he was a different man. Hallelujah. Because now they called him Israel, prince with God. A soldier of God. And he began to act just like him. And so when God does a change in your life according to the scripture. When folk who knew you before call you by the name that they knew you by. It no longer has effect on you. Because they're calling the wrong person. When they call desolate, you no longer answer to desolate because that's not your name. Glory to God. When they call frustration, you no longer answer to frustration because that's not your name. When they call failure, you no longer answer to failure because that's not your name. When they call lack and poverty, you no longer answer to it because that's not your name. But when they call success, because that's your name, you report for duty. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When they call joy, because that's your name, you report for duty. Hallelujah. When they call peace, because that's your name, you report for duty. Hallelujah. When they call prosperity, because that's your name, you report for duty. Hallelujah. When they call good health, long life, because that's your name, you report for duty. Hallelujah. And so there's power that accompanies these things. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to go down to the root of the problem and uproot the problem. Hallelujah. To bring you into a new life and to open up a new page for you. Hallelujah. Somebody 
have to give him praise right now. So there's something about the name that God wants to do in your life and in my life in this season. Don't you ever, ever leave this place today with your head down. You no longer are like that. You need to be able to leave this place today with your head high up. Because he is your shield. He is your glory. He is the lifter up of your head. Somebody praise him if you believe him. You can no longer leave this place today feeling broken, feeling sick. The Bible is saying, let the weak say what? I'm strong. And by his stripes we were healed. Hallelujah. Because he bore your sins and your sorrow. And the chastisement of the peace was upon him. Hallelujah. And by his strife, you and I have been healed. And we no longer can carry around diseases and pain. Because that's not your name. Glory to God. Don't you leave this place today ever feeling broken in your pocketbook, in your bank account. Hallelujah. You believe God that he is your El Shaddai. And when you look at your account this morning and it reads zero, 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 you can switch back into God that he supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And wait upon him. If he did it 24 hours after in Samaria, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. It's in your attitude. It's how you believe this word and how you choose to follow this word. If you choose to believe this word in a negative light, you'll find negativity. But if you choose to believe this word by faith, you know your faith is going to carry you through. And what is your faith? It's your title deed to the miracles of God. Hallelujah. You present your title deed. You come into the enemy's camp to take back which was yours. It was yours before they took it. And you're right there to take it back because you have the title deed. Hallelujah. Exercise your faith. Release your faith. Hallelujah. And believe God that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. And never you forget that name. J-E-S-U-S. The name that's above all names. And at that name every now should bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. Doesn't matter where you go. Doesn't matter where you find yourself. But if you can come with that name, you are guaranteed of success. Somebody give them praise. Somebody give them glory. Somebody give them glory. Somebody give them glory. Somebody give them glory, glory for that name. Somebody give them glory for that name. Somebody give him glory for that name. Somebody give him glory for that name. Somebody give him praise one more time. Glory to God. God bless you. My time is up. Thank God for your life that you came today. And I want you to go home with your mind set that God has done a transformation in your life. And go with your head up high. And feel God in your bones. Feel him standing by your side. And one thing I've said over and over again. God can never, never let you down. Amen. Praise Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for the name of Jesus. And Lord, you have given us an example of what you can do with a name. And Lord, we believe you that as you have said... That you're going to change our name and give us a new name. That God, you have done it. And Father, we give you praise. There will be a manifestation of the power of God and the glory of God. Lord, you did it before. You are going to do it again. And Father, we bless your name today. As we leave this place, we're not leaving your presence. We want your presence to come with us. And Lord, whatever we do in the course of this day, let your name be glorified with it. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Lord, and thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen.
If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.jciskin.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for 9.30 a.m. intercessory prayer and 10 a.m. services or on Wednesdays for 7 p.m. prayer and Bible study. We are located at 396 Vesey Street, off of Branch Avenue in Providence, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is King, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.